Hello and welcome back to the KCC channel. I'm Rob and I hope you are having a wonderful day today. Today we're jumping into a little bit of pro revenge and a little bit of nuclear revenge. Before we start, if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It's completely free. And if we hit 150,000 subscribers really soon, my wife might actually let me out of the basement. All right, our first story from the Pro Revenge subreddit comes to us from Immortal Heathen. Manager insists I do my job properly. Happy to comply, sir. Let's jump right in. In early 2020, I was hired under the title assistant manager at a local automotive shop. We mainly sold tires and alloy wheels for passenger vehicles. The company owned several stores. I reported directly to my manager, who then reported to the owner of the company. Shortly after I was hired, I noticed the behavior of the manager was far from professional. He would constantly mock and berate me for being the new guy. I believe part of this was jealousy and insecurity on his part, as I ended up recording more sales under my name within the first few months. He would also knock off work early and start drinking beer whilst the rest of us continued to work. I remember when he found out that I participated in MMA training sessions after work, he tried to goad me into a fight for his own amusement. Clearly, this guy didn't like me, and I was starting to get the feeling that he was trying to get me to snap or lose my cool, and as a result, my employment. I became even more certain of that with what happened next. Story. During the few months that I had worked there, I had noticed that our takings for the day and sales records did not match. I would often spend half an hour to an hour after work trying to figure out where the errors were coming from, whilst the manager would simply throw his hands in the air and exclaim that he had no idea how this was happening. The recurring issue seemed to be that our cash takings had been recorded incorrectly. There would sometimes be an excess amount of cash that didn't match up to what was recorded on our sales and invoicing software. Other times, there would be less. I was, at the time, an accounting student studying towards my bachelor's degree. I was already suspicious of the cash being out each day. However, given how the manager had been treating me up until this point, I was concerned that any complaint would somehow be twisted and used against me. And boy, was I right. Several weeks later, my manager took some time off. During this time, I managed a personal record in store sales and also noticed something interesting. The cash was never out at the end of each shift. I reported this directly to the owner of the company. Given I was acting manager during my time the manager was away, I was expected to report to the owner every day and explained what had been occurring whilst the manager was there. In all honesty, I was hopeful that the owner would be having a word with the manager about the discrepancies. However, I was also weary as I believed once the owner spoke to my manager that the manager will immediately know it was me who reported this. When the manager returned to work, he immediately approached me with a disgruntled look on his face. I've spoken with the owner. You tried to blame me for the discrepancies. You should focus on doing your job properly. Then this wouldn't happen. I was quite taken aback by how angry he was, though I wasn't surprised that he twisted it and tried to place blame on me. Given his reaction, I'm even more suspicious at this point. He wants me to do my job properly, eh? Malicious compliance ensues. That same week, I got to work. I started paying attention to what customers were paying when they were dealing with my manager. Behind his back, I began examining all of his sale transactions and invoices with a fine comb. As the days rolled by, I started to find evidence of his dishonesty. When it came to a few cash sales, my manager was doing the following. Example, one, would tell the customer the price is $200 if he pays cash. Two, would discount the price by $50 in the sale and invoicing software. Three, would put the extra cash into the till and record a $150 cash sale. Four, before we did the cash up at the end of the day, he would sneakily pocket this extra cash whilst no one was around. Though he was very foolish, as he clearly couldn't remember the exact amount he had swindled. Hence why the cash would be up some days, didn't swindle enough, or the cash would be down, swindled too much. The end. I took screenshots of the discounts he had been giving on sales and sent them to the business owner along with a report. A report with a detailed description of my findings. The report also showed that on all the days he wasn't there for the cash count, there was no variance. When he was there, well... <laughs> 
the owner was infuriated. This man had been his trusted employee for years. The owner was so infuriated, in fact, that he ordered my manager to do a mandatory drug test, pee in a cup style, on the same day he found out, and no surprises, he failed. Turns out, the manager had quite the drug habit. This was most likely his sole motive for stealing cash, and the owner was beside himself. We operate machinery every day in the store, and so the thought of a manager walking around high as a kite wouldn't sit well with any health and safety professional. In fact, it could have landed the owner in serious legal trouble if any accident or injury occurred under this manager's watch. The manager was terminated immediately for violation of his contract and was later taken to court by the owner in an attempt to recover the stolen funds. Safe to say, I was promoted to store manager position shortly after his termination. Jumping down to the comment section on this one, there's a comment from a user called Senatus Perversus. It says, I bet the manager and owner have some kind of history. The immediate drug test shows that the owner knew exactly what to look for. I feel like this one here hits the nail squarely on the head because there must have been some kind of history there for the owner to get that drug test right away. Maybe because the owner had this prior knowledge about issues that the manager had, they did that test so they'd have something extra to fire them over, not just the stealing part. They'd have concrete evidence with the drug test if they might not have concrete evidence for the stealing, so they still have a reason to get rid of them regardless. Our next story today, also from the Pro Revenge subreddit, comes to us from Double J369. I would like a raise and time off, and let's jump right in. I want to start this off by clarifying that it is not my story. It's the story of someone very close to me, and I will leave out a large amount of specific detail because quite a bit of info is not mine to reveal. The buildup to the revenge is that this person had a horrible employer. She worked HR and managed payroll at what was effectively a nursing home. I don't know that they call themselves that, but it's what they are. The company had a bit of a good old boys club going on, with all of the highest level management being older men, who all did less work and got more pay than pretty much everyone else. There were regular complaints from women about being mistreated, and many women were fired for absolutely absurd reasons, followed by their male co-workers getting raises. That in and of itself was bad, but it's not what instigated the need for revenge. What caused the burning desire to get back at the company was when the company fired my friend's manager, who was a woman, because she took a week off after literally breaking a leg badly. The HR department was already badly understaffed, so my friend had to take on the responsibilities of this manager without any pay bonus. She requested a pay bonus multiple times, denied each time. A month or so later, the company hires a new manager to replace the old one, at nearly twice the salary. This new manager is an older man. I'm not entirely sure what this guy actually did during the day, because my friend continued to do all of the managerial tasks, and she knows that for a fact because the guy's account didn't have access to the systems he needed access to, and he never asked for that access. For six months, my friend showed this manager issues within their system, including payroll, and explained that she was not only the only employee who knew how to use the payroll system, but she was the only one with access to it. The sexist douchebag ignored her and made regular comments about how she was replaceable and useless. One day, she loses her crap. She set up a bot with her credentials to automatically assign her pay each pay period, according to her actual salary, so not stealing anything. She then carefully plans her next move and puts in her two-week notice, right before a large department-wide week off, and right before her only co-worker has a two-week vacation. She wouldn't have time to train the co-worker, even if the co-worker was in the country. The manager still dismissed her, thinking he could just hire someone who knew what they were doing. Little did he know, she had tweaked with the payroll software over her time there. Nothing super awful, but it was very different from what the base software was. She was the only person who knew how to properly use it, and the only person in the whole company, including the CEO, who had access to the necessary numbers to actually run the payroll. When she leaves, after the two weeks, the company has two whole pay periods where they do not pay their employees. They can't. 
but my friend still gets paid because they never disabled her automatic payment thing. They couldn't. Eventually, they called her and basically begged her to consult with them on their payroll. For the past six months, she has been paid $250 an hour for five hours a week to run the company's payroll, fully remote, even though it was an in-person job before. And to top it all off, she doesn't even actually work the five hours. She wrote a script on her personal device to process payroll for her. She just has to press one button. She's working another job now, but darn, she really kicked them in the butt for their crap. Jumping down to the comment section on this one, we have one from a user called ITPerson5. It says, only five hours at $250 an hour? Should have made them guarantee $250 an hour minimum, 40 hours per week, as well as a paid week in advance every week as well. OP responded to this comment with, she's technically not working. I believe she's consulting by technicality, which has rules and such that I don't really know or care to learn. The company doesn't have the budget to pay her $250 for 40 hours a week. And since their way of cutting down costs is letting elderly people croak, she didn't want to keep kicking them after she got her revenge. Okay, that was brutal, but the conversation does continue, so let's keep going. Uh, from IT Person 5 again, they say, Ew, okay, I didn't realize they let people die to pay that. Sounds reportable though, if there is any kind of proof. OP responded to this one and said, It's a bit of an exaggeration. What's not an exaggeration is that over 60% of the residents present at the start of lockdown died within that first year. It's a high-end nursing home, but they still don't actually care about the residents. I don't even really know what to say to this one. I know that a lot of nursing homes are run for profit, and a lot of them unfortunately have employees that don't care about the residents there. We need to remember though that these residents are people, and we're going to be that age sometime too, and we're going to want somebody to take care of us. Going back into the story, I feel like there's still something reportable here though, because if the women were being ousted in favor of the older men coming back in, then if there's any proof of that happening, or even if there's a history of women being kicked out and a whole bunch of men being brought in, I'm sure that could be shown to somebody. Gotta be honest though, I'm not really versed on how employment laws work in various places around the US or Canada or anywhere else for that matter. This last story from the Nuclear Revenge subreddit comes to us from David E. Magic. Your bully son messes with us and you kill our dog? Prepare for dad. Let's jump right in. This happened in 1995 in a small rural town in Chaco Province, Argentina. Everyone knows each other here until this very day. My father was an electrician, the only one in town. So he was constantly meeting people, and as he was born and raised here, he was very well known by everyone. He grew up with many of the police officers from back then, and they even had aceros together, Argentinian barbecue, at least three times a month for years. My father was not a violent man. That was the only time I saw him do something like that. The other man with his bully son, they were not from town. They had moved here a year or so prior. They were from Buenos Aires. I don't really know the guy. Only his kid who was an absolute butthole to almost every kid on the block. And he constantly picked on me and my brother since we were the youngest of our neighborhood. Therefore, couldn't defend ourselves. Bucky wasn't trained since we knew nothing about training but he was loyal and playful with every kid. One thing for sure though, he was protective. One afternoon, we were playing in the park and out came Bully Kid, who at first threw rocks at us, then got closer and started calling us names, and us being little got scared. He was bigger than us. We tried to leave, but he blocked us and started hitting my brother. I tried to stop him, but he did the same to me. Bucky heard us crying and came running, jumping and getting the bully's arm at once. He bit, shook, and released, staying between us and the bully, barking like mad until the kid left running. When we saw him get inside his house, and a few seconds later, came father with the sledgehammer. Bucky stood in front of us, hairs raised and barking, but the man didn't stop. He got close, raised the sledgehammer, and went straight down to Bucky's head. He did not hit him once, he hit him five times. Now, another KCC note, the OP here got a little descriptive of the dog, and I, I don't want to get into this, so I'm kind of going to skip over that part, but just understand that that dog met a very violent death. 
my brother and I were frozen in place, scared to death, crying a lot. The butthole dad said something which I don't remember now and left. We were unable to move for a moment, such was our fear. Finally, I grabbed my brother and went home. Dad was fixing a fan and when he saw us, asked us what happened. We told him and he just said, right, okay, let's wash your faces and grab some ice cream. Yes, that's what our dad did took us for ice cream. He did a pretty well job to mask his emotions and showed himself cheerful to us. That night, when brother was asleep and I was playing in the kitchen, he grabbed the wrench, told mom and I he had to fix something in the neighborhood. I assumed it was another neighbor since it was a common thing for my dad to get asked by neighbors to fix things. Nodded to mom. Mom nodded back. Yes, she knew. And left. He came back some minutes later told me to go to bed, and that was it. A decade later, we came to know what happened. He went to the guy's house, knocked on the door, and punched the dude so hard it rocked his head back. Told him he would break one limb for each of his children whom he made cry. I can only imagine what he would have done if we were more than two kids. Alright, KCC note, I'm gonna cut out some of the details, but the guy ended up with two broken legs. He then left the house, went home, asked me to go to bed, talked to mom, and went straight to the police turned himself in, and was actually delayed until the police went and checked with the other guy. My dad also showed our dog to them, and the police found the sledgehammer on the bully's house, still with blood on it, and they let my father go. They also spoke to the dude when he got better, and suggested him to leave the town, since if they weren't liked before, they wouldn't ever be now. To this, you gotta understand the mindset from some small, rural towns. We looked at outsiders with mistrust back then, and it took a while for people to get used to you if you were new in town. However, these people came and weren't liked very much, apparently because of the kid and the father was also a butthole. I do not condone the actions of my father, nor am I justifying it in any way the events that transpired then. But as a father myself, I can totally understand to what extent a man can react when their kids are at play. I love my dad and I have mad respect for him. Rest in peace, dad. We miss you greatly. So there, that's the full story. Sorry for my bad English. It is not my native language. Thanks, guys. Normally, we'd jump down to the comment section and take a look at some of the ones down there, but a lot of the ones down there were condoning the violence, and I just don't want to read those out on the channel because, yeah. What I will say on this one, though, is that those kids need counseling. Now, OP did state that this story took place in 1995, which is quite a while ago now, uh, so I don't know if that counseling happened or not because OP hasn't mentioned it in any of their comments. But this is an event that would scar kids for life, and they need to be able to talk to somebody about that and work their way through it. I think I'm just going to leave that one there. Check out all three OPs linked in the description down below. I thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow.